Hey guys, Extermicide here, and I just wanted to make a short video of my personal settings in Battlefield 5. These are the settings that I believe to be the best settings when playing Battlefield 5 if you want to get really good frame rates and still have the game look good. Just remember, however, people's hardware is different. Mileage may vary. First thing you want to do is click, over, uh, click more, go into options, and let's take a look at the, uh, the video options first. Because that's what most of you are going to be uh, most interested in. So you want to make sure you're in full screen mode. Full screen mode, by far, in any game, is just going to give you your highest frame rates. Make sure that you got your monitor selected. And make sure that, you know, if you got a high uh, refresh rate monitor, make sure you're selecting the right refresh rate. Brightness. I think the default for this is at like a 50 or something like that. I like to boost it up just a little bit more to 70. Make those darker areas a little bit lighter. This is going to allow you to see the enemy a little bit sooner. Field of view. Now, this has changed in uh, Battlefield 5 compared to past Battlefields. But um, this number right here is not the number you're really looking at. If you know... If you notice, when I, when I mouse over this, you, over here on the right, you're going to see horizontal field of view 90. That's the setting that we have always set in our battlefields in the past. Call of Duty games, Counter-Strike games, most players will have a field of view of 90. So, in order to get that, the, as you change this here, that number changes over there. So... You're going to have to play with it to get to where you want it. But I think a lot of freaking people are going to like somewhere between 72 and 74 for this value. Um, same thing for the, uh, the for the vehicle. ADS field, field of view on. Enable or disable field of view scaling when aiming down sights so this makes it basically if you have it on when you aim your down your sights your field of view is not going to change uh, dramatically it's going to remain like what you're seeing up here motion blur you want to bring that all the way down you want to turn it off it's just going to eat up your frame rates and cause blurriness in certain scenes you know to make it look like an action movie and it's going to eat up your frame rates and you don't want that so turn this off the depth of field effects on a weapon you want to have this off custom color settings off when you get down here to chromatic aberration film grain vignette and lens distortion you want to turn all these off these are all um pretty much like motion blur are Hollywood type effects that they put into the game to make it look more like a movie, but it's just gonna eat up your frame rates. Jumping over to the advanced tab, this is gonna be a personal preference. Some people, some people claim that DX12 works better. Some people claim DX11 works better. Um, for me, I have had DX11. And it's not that I found that one works better than the other. I actually found that for my computer, they were actually pretty much, pretty close to being the same. But I like to uh, run um, uh, FPS overlays. And some overlays don't operate on DX12. They, they only operate on uh, DX11. So therefore, I keep it off so to run on DX11. High dynamic range. Uh, you want to have that off and resolution scale you want to have at 100 if you turn this higher you're going to have higher quality and if you turn it lower your uh, computer is going to spend more time rendering so 100 is just a nice balanced place to keep this frame rate limiter should be based on whatever your monitor is if you got a 60 hertz monitor put it there if you got on one of the 144s or the 200s change this value to what is appropriate for your monitor future frame rendering um 
is an interesting one, but most people have found that um, if you turn this off, you are going to notice that your mouse is going to operate snappier. There's not going to be any input lag at all. But if you turn this on, it's going to try to read ahead for, uh, as it says in the name, future frames um, to kind of try to give you more frames per second. If your computer is a beast and you're already having no problems with your frames to begin with, turn this off. You'll feel it in the mouse, um, that your mouse is just snappier and there's absolutely freaking no input lag at all. But if you turn this on, you're going to notice like a, a it's going to be like a two millisecond lag that, uh, that some people can actually feel. I can feel it. Vertical sync off, UI upscaling, auto, GPU memory restriction off. HUD scaling, 50%. And here's where the bread and butter is. Graphic quality, go to custom, turn everything to low, except for mesh quality, okay? So your, your texture, your lighting, your effects, your post-processing, the terrain, most importantly, that freaking terrain, um, you want on low. But the mesh quality being on ultra is going to put this nice mesh texture on all the graphics so they don't look like they're on low anymore once once this is on and you're going to notice that having all these settings on low is just going to boost your fps tremendously anti-aliasing um, there's no way to turn it off in game so we just want to turn it to low and beating uh a Kilson off and fx amount um, the amount of objects that will run all effects medium is fine you can turn this to low if you want to, and it should boost your frames per second a little bit more but um, considering you already have all of this on low and the ultra is compensating for everything being on low there turning on a little bit more um, FX if your computer can handle it you know might might actually be enjoyable to you but if you don't really care about things like that go to low okay so that covers the video and, that, and that's the most important part of it but um we'll check out the audio settings of course your master volume is going to be whatever you want it at music volume turn it all the way off battlefield 5 has some great music in the game don't get me wrong but it's going to get old quick and when you're in one of these matches background music um, is going to take away from you being uh, being able to hear the enemy so it's kind of better to have this off and the only time I would turn this back on is if you're playing the um, the solo campaigns then you're going to want to freaking definitely turn this on because the music is very epic in those solo campaigns and worth hearing. Sound preset. Um, in past battlefields, the go-to has always been war tapes. And that has kind of changed since uh, with Battlefield 5, they're do now doing 3D headphones. And this is a new technology built into Battlefield 5. And even if you're... Uh, running this out through your stereo speakers or anything still put on 3d headphones the sound is going to be freaking amazing whether or not you're on speakers headphones whatever um more tapes before in the past was just uh it brought out everything it just put it you know like i said in the, it says in the description there an emphasis on chaos you just heard every little freaking sound and it sounded real as all hell but the sound files for war tapes were actually uh, huge and in order to get all those sounds playing they were just you know you you had to have a nice beefy computer that could sit there and load up these beefier sound effects 3d headphones kind of um operates the same as war tapes but the sound files are now much more condensed and much smaller and it's, it's just just really amazing pinpoint accuracy with 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 sounds you put the headphones on and 
even if someone running up behind you, you will you will hear it, even if you don't have a pair of 3D headphones to, per se. I know there are headphones out there that are specifically, they say 3D gamer headphones. I, I use a regular pair of uh, Sennheiser 570s and I hear the sounds all around me. So definitely use this mode. Announcer language, it's gonna be custom to whatever your native language is. In-game announcer, this is a personal preference thing. Um, if you don't wanna hear all the announcements, you know, butter's been taken and blah, blah, blah. Um, you, can, you can turn it off. I like having it on. So, um, voice over IP, whether or not you want to be able to uh, voice chat in game, it it's not the best freaking system in the world, but it works. So I keep it on. Nine out of ten times, though, I will usually be in a uh, my clan's Teamspeak or a Discord server. And I'll be communicating with people through those programs. But, you know, every now and then someone will join my squad who I don't know. They're, they're not in my clan. You know, they're not a friend of mine. But they'll try talking to me. And, you know, having this on, I still have the ability to talk back to them. Voice over IP, if you're going to have this on, turn your volume all the way up. Because it's, uh, by default, it's very... It's very muted and, and muffled. You, you, you really need to turn this all the way up. Game volume reduction. You want to turn this off. The last thing you want is when every time you talk or someone else talks, the game kind of reduces its volume a little bit. Because that reduction in volume could be the difference about whether or not someone sneaks up behind you and kills you. Subtitles on or off. This pretty much just affects the, um, the single player campaigns. So I, I leave them on. It, it's it's a personal preference thing. It's up to you guys. And text size, I leave normal. No real reason to change that. Okay. Let's see. Controls. Let's see if anything gets turned uh, changed in here. Um, invert vertical lock off. The mouse sensitivities. It's going to be a personal choice. Soldier zoom, aim sensitivity, 100. Soldier sprint, toggle or hold. Um, this, this, this is another, again a personal preference. I like to hold the, you know, the shift button to make my character run. I'm used to that. That's the way I've done it throughout all the battlefields. So it is the way I will continue to do it. Uh, double tap forward to sprint. I have it off because like I said, I hold the shift key to freaking run. So um, if you Again, personal preference. Soldier weapon zoom. Do you want to toggle? You know, have a toggle or a hold? I like holding my right mouse button, and I'm zoomed. I let go of the right mouse button, and I unzoom. So, I put hold, steady scope, hold. This is again personal preferences. Your your preference may be very different than mine. Vehicle mouse aim sensitivity 20%. Vehicle stick aim sensitivity 20%. Vehicle weapon zoom, hold, invert, flight, uh, vertical flight, on. Um, game pads, I, I don't use game pads, so I leave all these on default, so change them at your will. Advanced, uh, stick aiming left, right, acceleration, I leave at 50%. Uniform soldier aiming, I have on. So, Having this on, basically, um, when when you aim, which for me, like I said, I is pressing the right mouse button and everything. Every single time I aim, it's going to be exactly the same amount of time to the millisecond to aim, and my reflexes and my my mind and everything is going to all get used to it being this certain amount of time if you have this off then it's, it's, it, they calculate a different way where the numbers actually vary a little bit so it'll take it takes longer to get used to it but when everything is uniform as far as uh exactly down to the freaking millisecond of how long your your muscle memory as they're calling it here is going to learn it a lot quicker 
coefficient, uh, fine tuning the uniform, soldier aiming if enabled, which we do have it on. So we set the value. I my value set at 133. Like, like I said, you're gonna this this is gonna operate on an independent uh, one current value, and mine's at 133 percent. It's what I'm used to, it's what I've gotten used to, and if I change it now, I probably will uh, have to take a while to get used to it again. Vehicle aiming, 50%. Uniform vehicle aiming off. Relative uh, vehicle aim relative controls on. Decoupling aim aiming from turning as drivers off. Decoupling aiming from turning as passenger on and decoupling pilot free look off. Soldier zoom aim sensitivity. This is for the different scopes. This is a lot of um, configuration that Battlefield really didn't have to add to the game. So we can be appreciative that they actually did add it to the game because it gives us just more stuff to play with. But based on... Um, the different scopes you can actually decide how uh, sensitive you want to make make it as far as when you're aiming down those scopes um plane control sensitivity 150 tank sensitivity 100 i believe these are all defaults vehicle aim ratio 100 vehicle zoom aim ratio 100 soldier aim ratio 48 this is with the vertical stick aim ratio Vertical aim ratio 48% and vehicle zoom aim ratio at 80%. Again, these are my settings. Um, tweak them as you feel the need, but I find these settings to work very, very, very well. In controller tuning, the two things you really want to freaking change in here are these two right here. Raw mouse input you want to have on. It's just going to make your mouse uh, much more snappier and vibration. If you have a vibrating mouse or a vibrating controller, you, you want this off. But if you if you insist on having it vibrate, by all the power to you, go ahead. But believe it or not, when you're playing and your mouse starts freaking vibrating, those little freaking vibrations can screw with your aim in the slightest. So, it's up to you. Center dead zone, 22%. This is for the game pads. The game pad. See, I think I'll, I have all this at default because I don't use a joystick and I don't use the game pads. So, that's it for controllers for me. Um, gameplay. A lot of this is going to be personal preference too, but I'm going to run through what I have. Show HUD. I have it on show. HUD motion on off, on, player created content, um, show, this is um, like clan decals, you know, if they're going to show up on tanks or on the uniform arms and everything, whether or not you want them to actually show up. Chat log, I have hidden, um, to be honest with you, if someone is going to talk to you who are in your squad they're probably going to use voice chat and they probably should use voice chat that's why it's there and if you don't have a mic you know they're, they're cheap enough that they're, they're, there really is no freaking excuse get yourself a freaking mic and play the game the way it's meant to be played um but i don't have the chat log displaying because of the uh, the negativity of the you know the people just being total racist and you know just bad mouthing everything everything and complaining I, I i don't need to see it i don't want to see it and especially if i'm streaming I, I i don't need to have that negativity broadcasted it just it just takes a few bad people to freaking make everything worse for everybody else so i keep that hidden magnified chat i have an option since i have the chat log off anyway uh inventory when active kill log i um I have it showing. You can turn that off if you want. That'll be the little the guns up here showing who killed who. Um, a kill log filter. I have it on nearby. Um, basically, what this allows me to do is uh, 
sometimes the kill log can really scroll fast and be just showing a lot of information. This will only show the nearby information, the deaths that have happened near me. Definitely good like when someone launches a rocket and it lands on a freaking, on a target. If there's a lot of deaths, sometimes just the kill log can just scroll a lot of freaking information all at once. I don't want it to scroll all that information unless I'm near that area, unless it's relevant to me. Um, the kill log weapon will show the, uh, for me, the icon and the name, so it'll show the, the little icon of the weapon and the name of it. Um, so like extermicide, um, killed, blah, 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 with, you know, the, and it'll show the picture of the gun and the name of it. Um, score log weapon name off awards. Um, this is a preference thing. Um, I have it show if I get a new award, I want to know about it, but you can actually turn this off and it's either way, it's not going to hurt or I, I don't even think it'll make anything even better. So having it not showing is not going to really, uh, do anything. Vehicle seat info, I have it show just, you know, just in case I get into a tank, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a passenger. I want to jump to, uh, the side seat or the back seat, you know, there's going to be the little map down in the lower right that's going to show me um, which key to press to actually get to the right seat. So I rather have that showing. Critical messages um, is when you, uh, Dice is going to, you know, let's say they're going to reset the servers or something, whether or not you want these messages to be displaying in game. I always have those show. Share uses data. This is typically up to you I have it off you know you guys don't need to know everything about my life so you know that's my feeling about it so but if you're one of those people who say well you know why it's helping them develop a better game then by all the by all the power to you go ahead send them your usage data you know and overlay shadow strength is actually um, I have it a hundred percent it's actually going to make some of the shadowed um, like uh, friendly characters, enemy characters, um, the shadows that they're casting to be a little bit stronger so they stand out a little bit more. All right. And key bindings, again, uh, whether or not you're changing anything in your key bindings is going to be totally up to you. Um, about the only thing you'll probably want to change in there is uh, whether or not you like uh, you want to you're used to using a certain key for your voice over IP because you use that same key in Call of Duty and you use it in Battlefield and you use it in every other game you play and you're just used to pressing that one key. Well, then you might want to go in there and change your voice over IP key to whatever you're used to. But other than that, this is, you know, everything in key binding is going to be a personal preference. So there you have it, guys. That's my personal recommendation, my personal settings for Battlefield 5. I don't claim that they're the best settings in the world, that they're, that they're the all to the end all, you know, kick ass freaking settings. But what I will assure you is if you did follow the ones in the video uh, section, um, especially in the advanced section, th this whole freaking area here will tremendously boost your frames per second and get you into a good area of uh, playing no matter what video card you're using, but do remember that all this is based on what hardware you are running to. You know, if you're running a shitty processor or you're running a freaking, you know, five-year-old freaking video card, don't expect these settings to perform miracles, but like I said, this setting right here with, with turn, turning everything to low will help tremendously. And if, uh, if your computer is that out of shape and that old, you might have to turn this ultra down to maybe medium you know to, to get it you know to uh to perform better but doing so just you know just remember the, the game you know definitely with this setting is going once you start going lower than ultra it's going to start making the uh the graphics of the game degrade and just look more awful you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, you know, you, your graphics are going to get worse. So just be prepared for that. But if you're running a modern day system, um, this is my settings. 
So, I hope this video helps some of you guys. Give me a like if you liked it. And give me a thumbs down if it didn't help you at all. Okay? But, uh, catch you guys next time.